This rather odd contraption is a bumble ball. It's a kid's toy, but it's quite a fun and interesting device, and it does have electronics in it, and that's what we're going to be taking a look at. So the idea of this device is that when you activate it, and there's a push button here to do that, it will run for a set length of time. And if I put it on the table here, I don't know if it's definitely, I'm going to put it in the hands, it's probably best. But the idea is it starts bouncing about and uh, on a hard surface it makes a lot of noise because normally these little rubber feet are soft, but these ones are actually quite hard. It works fine on the carpet, but on the bench here, it really rattles about, makes a lot of noise. But anyway, uh, this one incidentally came from a UK seller, B&M Home Stores, but they're available all around the world. Usually there's just one screw, but this one has three. One screw and a bayonet cap system that, you know, basically you undo that one screw and then physically just twist it off. This one doesn't have that. It's more screws, which means that it's never going to have the batteries changed. Mummy and Daddy are never going to do that. Inside, we have the... Uh, battery pack here, and the battery pack actually acts as a counterbalance weight. I'm guessing this is the motor in here with the gears onto the side here. And then we've got the batteries as the weight, and that's what is basically whizzing around inside. I can show you that by pushing this in. Mm, it's not going to stop now, is it? Right, tell you what. Um, I'll just wait for it to stop. It stopped. And then I shall pop this little clip up, take the batteries out, the generic batteries that I stuck in it for the test. And then we shall disassemble this. Hmm. Now, can I just take it apart? No, I'll take the whole thing out. It will be a journey of discovery into children's toys. So this comes off. And this comes off. Multi screws. Quite complex, really. I thought it would be a simpler construction. So, this is quite a good start. Okay, right, so what? Let's just start randomly taking these screws out as well. This is the bit you can skip across if you don't want to see it. And this is also where you're going to see a gearbox just disintegrate into pulp, probably. I got one of these a very long time ago and it had that different construction. This one might just be optimised for safety, I'm not really sure, it doesn't seem like it'd be optimised for safety as such. A couple more screws in the motor area. And then are we going to have an explosion of cog wheels? I'm wondering if I should actually pop this thing out here. I should take this last screw out, it appears almost to be a locking screw. Is that going to come out? No, it's not going to come out. Right. Oh, and that thing... Oh, no, it's not going to come out. Oh, there it goes. Righty-ho. I could zoom down this now. Now that we've got the bulky bits out of the way. I think the first one I got had a little toggle switch you pushed in, and it didn't turn itself off. Lots of filtering. There's the circuit board. With an overcurrent device in it. Wow. Right, tell you what. I think we have to explore this a lot more. So there is the switch mechanism. There's a little switch down here that is pushed in by the button being pushed in the side. And it doesn't matter where it is around that. It will push that in. Oh, God, it's pushed it right in. And uh, it pushes that little contact there to actually signal to the control PCB it's to run. Yeah, look, two inductors and a capacitor, they've gone to town big time. On the filtering here. Wild. Okay. Right. Well, I'll take this stuff out and we shall explore the circuit board. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. And by far one of the most odd things about this circuitry is the amount of protection added for the motor stalling and also interference suppression on the motor. They've really gone to town. Look, there's two inductors, 6.8 micro Henry in series of the motor, and then there's a one, two, three, 100 nanofarad capacitors, and I shall show you their, their position on this schematic. Other things worthy of note, there is this little uh, PTC thermistor here that is an overcurrent device. Not quite sure what its rating is, but I think it's around about an amp, although it held at an amp, but they would do. It takes a wee while for them to warm up. I tested that. Um, right. So, 
The supply comes in and there is, well, one connection, the positive connection, goes straight out to the uh, motor. And then across the motor, not actually on the motor itself, but across the motor on the circuit board, is a capacitor. We've got a short key diode to decouple the supply there from the rest of the circuitry. We've got a smoothing capacitor here. Uh, I should draw that in. Hold on, I should draw that in right now. Although it's on the schematic, so that should be fine. Um, so we've got the smoothing capacitor and then a little decoupling capacitor and then the chip. I drew a blank on the chip. 2118. Mm, lots came up for that in that package. That chip has a button input going to the negative connection, the zero volt rail, and then it drives a MOSFET, and the MOSFET has a 10k pull down resistor. Um, there is a current limiting resistor, 0.68 ohms, and then there's the uh, electronic fuse, which I should also draw in here. Why don't I just finish doing the job before starting the video? That would be so much better. It's on the schematic, though. It doesn't really matter. I'll just write PTC in there. And then that goes to the MOSFET that then switches the motor. Uh, other things worth mentioning, on the back of the circuit board, we have this resistor here has a little bit of a heat sinking on the uh, PCB in the form of these this pad in the back and also this pad here. And the MOSFET, its main switching pin here, is also covered through plated through holes to a heat sinking plate on the back. Let's take a look at the schematic, shall we? With its weird motor thing. I should write also in the middle of that 2118. 2118. Okay. The schematic, it's not super complicated. Let's get a little tiny bit closer. Here are the three AA cells that give us a supply of 4.5 volts. That goes straight out to the motor via the little 6.8 microhenry inductor. Through the motor, another 6.8 microhenry inductor. Then we've got a 100 nanofarad capacitor across that for uh, protection, probably the MOSFET, just by clamping any spikes as it turns off. But we've also got 100 nano across the motor itself, which will also help. And then we've got uh, two more 100 nano, which are going from either terminal onto the case. I've seen this a lot before. It's all to do with RF suppression of noise from the sparking brushes, probably because it's under quite a high load, because it's really throwing a lot of weight around. The circuitry, the chip, is powered via a Schottky diode. Um, for polarity protection, there is a 220 microfarad, 220 microfarad, 10 volt capacitor here, and there is a decoupling capacitor, probably 100 nanofarad. It's in circuit, so I couldn't really test it. Also in parallel that capacitor, so I'd have to take it out to test it. There's a little button, which is actually the uh, coupled um, external push button through the sort of sliding plastic ring onto a little uh, plunger that pushes metal contacts together. Very typical, as found in toys. And then here's the oddity. So it drives the MOSFET, an AO3400. Actually, the MOSFET was marked uh, AOLA. 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 Ole. So there's the MOSFET, and uh, it's switching the motor, but noting that on the source of the MOSFET, this N-channel MOSFET, we've got the PTC thermistor, and its numbering. Its numbering is uh, A1351V. A1351V. I wonder if that's a 1 amp, but it's a 135 volt rated one. Not sure. Tricky. The markings in these are all quite odd, and it didn't immediately tally up with data sheets. And there's the fixed 0.68 ohm resistor, which limits the sort of inrush current from start. Um, so it's all geared up to interference suppression and also the possibility of that just motor stalling and causing problems. And it will just cut the power off to avoid it overheating. Um, very odd. But there we have it. That is what's in that lurid Bumble Boy toy. Bumble Boy toy. Bumble Ball toy. No Bumble Boys. That's embarrassing. <laughs> what is a bumble boy? I'm not, no, I don't want to know, actually. It's probably a, a term used in the Catholic Church. But there we have it. Uh, it's an interesting toy. The most interesting thing is all the suppression, which would be completely missing in any Chinese import product, any sort of grey import that didn't have to comply with UK noise regulations. Uh, they probably wouldn't have this overcurrent 
thing an hour. They'd just be basically saying if it goes up in smoke, the child is going to have to learn to expect explosions. But there we have it, the Bumble Boy from BM Home Stores. Quite interesting little toy inside.